Survivor's ready! Direct from Hobart, it's time for you to hear those so-called experts from Survivor Oz talk about another reality show despite the fact they always said they would only ever talk about Survivor. It's the Amazing Race Oz, and here's your host, Noah Grove. Hello people, people and zebras, and welcome to the Amazing Race Oz, Australia's only and best Amazing Race podcast. That is what you are listening to right now. Uh, welcome to the wonderful intros of Noah Grove's. Uh, we are back to talk about episode 7 and 8 of the Amazing Race, because no one ever thinks of the podcasters and gives us two episodes to get through. So we'll jump straight into it because we've obviously got a lot to talk about. I'm joined by almost a full house today. <laughs> um, thank you, Kristen. Uh, almost a full house. Missing Alex. He's busy writing the recap, so he'll he'll be getting that yeah. done. It's a double episode. He's got to have a lot of time to do it. But we'll jump it straight in. And I already mentioned her name. She's making fun of me in the comments, and I'm considering hanging up on her. But from somewhere in, uh, underneath somebody's house in California, somewhere, it is Kristen Snooker Canar. Kristen, welcome back. Thank you so much. I'm it's glad so that you granted um, an hour or so to come on Skype. Um, you've been allowed onto the internet, so that's good to know. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> uh, ho- hopefully, uh, that that underground dungeon isn't auditions for Teen Mum, um, but uh, we'll leave it there. <laughs> also, from somewhere in the US, which I don't care about, it is Rossi coming to you live from Drew University, the most esteemed university in wherever he's from. Rossi, welcome back. I hate you so much. Well, as I always say, the feeling is mutual. From Winnipeg, somewhere, maybe in a dungeon, I'm not sure if he owns a dungeon. If he doesn't, I think he should invest in a dungeon, because dungeons, it's Colin Hilding. If anybody can hear me right now, we have had an episode free of technical glitches. Yeah, Colin, um, you were doing so good. You were on every episode. I was disappointed you didn't turn up. I didn't last turn week. up. Yet somehow, miraculously, I recorded it and edited it and uploaded it. That's just the skill of Canadians. Yeah, well, as we said off air, if anyone can tell us where Colin may have jumped into the Skype call, um, <laughs> give us the timestamp and you'll receive a prize. Um, Big hug from Rossi. So, obviously, no one's going to listen to the episode now. But last, and will he be the least? We will find out. Probably not least, because he is no longer least on the rank, uh, the predictions, sorry, is Jared Lubeck, the king of emus. Jared, you're in the game now. I know. I just um, let you all get off to an early start, um, just set up that false sense of security, and now look out. <laughs> Hey, you, you can still take it. Technically, you've got four weeks. You could take this. Yeah, I, 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 I hope, but I doubt it. Well, yeah, I'm a little worried now. Um, we'll get to the predictions later in this episode, but it, it's a fun one. Anyway, let's jump straight into the double episode. We've got a lot, a lot, a lot to get through. General thoughts on it. We'll move through some of this, but general thoughts on the episode. I thought it was pretty good but it was a bit of an endurance test to get through all of it colin what did you think um i was kind of mixed on the first half um i think a lot of the unpredictable drama was good but the challenges were very hit and miss Uh, i think the second hour was a huge improvement despite again having a pretty predictable outcome which is just becoming normal for the season that's a little bit annoying but um some 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 of the teams that have previously been a little bit boring are showing a little bit more life, so uh, that's a bonus there. I feel like this episode could have been a 90-minute one, which would be unusual, but I feel like we could have cut a bit out of it. Rossi, what are your thoughts? Um... Well, I don't really remember much from the first episode, but... Well, we're in for a good podcast. Um, but it was good, too. <laughs> yep, I, uh, I, I uh, agree. Um, Can we ask the guy in the Rossi? background what his opinion was? <laughs> yeah, um, Hagen, what do you think of the episode? Um, 
Jared, what did you think? Emus, there was other exotic animals, so I'm sure you loved it. Yeah, I thought it was fairly good. I do agree that I thought it was a little bit slow. I think kind of um, just the location, there's a lot less chaos and traffic and, and people, so um, it kind of feels a bit slower, the episode, but overall I thought they were okay. And Christy, what did you think? Um, I thought there were a lot of good moments, and I think I'm just thankful that they put these episodes back to back. Because if we had to talk about these two separate weeks, I think that that would not be fun. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, it was probably a good decision. They obviously had to do a double episode at some point. Probably the best time to do it, I would say. Uh, a bit disappointed they didn't just pop down to Hobart for a few minutes, but maybe later in the season, who knows. Um, so we started with the Laura and Tyler date night. Um, nothing too interesting. That was their second one, apparently. I think we missed last time that they got the date night. I don't know if that was aired. And then later in this episode, as we'll see, they'll get the date night. Um, Rossi, do you think they should be rigging these date nights uh or just completely dropping them? Because it's a bit boring that one team got them three times in a row. Um, well, I think they're just trying to salvage this blind date twist as much as they can and give it to the team that gets along the most out of the blind dates. So. Well, I would say that they should give it to the team that doesn't get along. Like, give Blair and Haley, and then Haley is just, just completely getting in his ear on the date night and ruining the date night. That's what I'd say. But Colin... Date nights, should we get rid of them? Yeah, I'm really surprised they haven't at this point. It should be going the way of Exile Island and just not even featuring in the episode, despite you see them get the date night and then just don't show it the next week. Uh, it is an interesting point that Rossi brings up that maybe I am starting to think now that this is a little bit rigged and they're just like, well, what do we do to save this season? Do we really want to be giving away these date nights and then having these people give it away to other teams because they can't stand each other? So just give it to Tyler and Laura every week or Jeff and Jackie. So um, it'll be interesting to see what happens next week to see if it just keeps going to the, those teams. Krista? Um, yeah, we don't really see much of it, so I don't see what the point is of bringing it up every episode. But I wish that we could have a double with Jenny and Jelani and Blair and Haley, so they could just like hate their men, like Ooh, their part, double, their male partners, the entire episode. Yeah, because like Jenny and Haley would love to just talk shit, and I would love it. I don't want a double date. I want a three-person date. Let's get Phil, Phil on in the dates. He needs a bit of love. Um, that would be pretty good. I want Phil on date. Phil on the scene. Phil on the date. Uh, Jared, what did you think? Um. I don't really mind them. I think it would be interesting if uh, maybe they just, every date night is a blind date with just somebody from the country that they're at. Um, <laughs> <laughs> increase their chances of um, somebody ending up together. So that'd be nice. Uh, that's a good idea. Or maybe the date night should be between couples who aren't racing together. So put Haley and Laura on a date or something like I would watch that. But anyway, let's not get into that. Um, so we were in Monaco and we had to fly to Windhoek, Namibia, or I can't remember what uh, Mike called it, but it was something funny, Nam Nambia or something like that. And once I arrived there, they had to get a bush plane to uh, the national park, I guess it was. And we had there uh, probably one of my favourite uh, bits from the episode with Haley uh, when she was kind of getting into Hagen, uh, <laughs> who was labelled the handsome bush pilot. Um, something about the word handsome bush pilot just does not sound right with me. Um, and we had a selfie with Hagen in the end. Did you love Hagen, the handsome bush pilot? Jared? Um... I thought that was great. That's who should the blind date should have been. Uh, she should have been able to in a new twist good. switch her partner for somebody on the street, and she could have picked Hagen, and then Blair could have found somebody else. Yeah, I would watch that. I love that idea, Haley and Hagen. <laughs> Kristen Hagen, the handsome bush pilot. Was he? Was he handsome? He was okay. I don't know. Was he Hagen? <laughs> was he a bush pilot? Sure. <laughs> well, thanks for that. Colin, Hagen. 
Um, I, I think he's going to have a CBS spinoff because they were loving him, giving him his own <laughs> captions and subtitles. And, um, I, I'm wondering if this is two weeks in a row. Hagen's Heroes? Hagen's Heroes, that's a good one. <laughs> Let's just, there's, there's a, another challenge. Any, any listeners out there, please send us your pitches for CBS's Hagen the Handsome Bush Pilot yeah, pilot. Yeah, what's the Hagen the Handsome Bush Pilot pilot going to be called? Send the, the pilot pilot. Uh, I'm, I'm starting to wonder about Haley, though, with her going on and on every single week wanting to meet another man. Like, is she just really desperate for a date and this season's been a huge disappointment for her? Or is she trying really hard to make Blair jealous, maybe? Because every single week, it's like she's just that would be another good show. What Haley makes Blair jealous? Haley, ra- well, Haley, <laughs> Haley races around the world, and each each week she visits a new country trying to find love. <laughs> it's like The Bachelor on the road, but like around the way around the world with eighty men or something. <laughs> That's like that. a good title, <laughs> but it's always going to end the same way. I mean, she's going to verbally abuse them, and they're going to cry and leave her. <laughs> What's well, a formulaic show? Colin. That's just—that's what the fans love. They love the catchphrases, and Haley always lives at the end of the episode. Uh, Rossi, I know you loved Hagen the Handsome Bush Pilot. I love scene because it could not be a better example of why this twist is failing. When one of the blind dates is Do you say this twist is Haley? Haley, so, like a phrase for saying it's failing. It's Haley. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Go on, Rossi. I apologize. It just proves how much this twist isn't working and <laughs> considering Haley's trying to hook up with someone on each leg. <laughs> Hashtag Haley. All right. Um, we had to catch the bush planes, which I think would have been terrifying. Those little planes would have been kind of a bit scary, um, a bit rocky. And when they arrived, we had Phil. I just love seeing Phil on the scene with the planes, and Laura and Tyler won the date night again, and they had to get into their cars, and I didn't catch what the car was, probably a Ford Focus or a Ford C-Max Hybrid or something, and they had to uh, drive to some sort of camp and pick up a salt lick along the way, which some of the teams forgot, and we had our first roadblock of the episode called Stick Around, where they had to build huts with the locals oh. uh, and Al. Oh, sorry. No. What? Right. what? <laughs> you cut up for a second. No, stick around a rope. Com- com- That's maybe <sighs> one of the most boring roadblocks ever to watch. I mean, I was appreciating that they did something challenging that wasn't over in thirty seconds, but like we're watching people dig a hole in the ground and the hole they're digging is maybe only a couple of inches deep and it takes place over the course of like an hour like just cut this whole sequence we didn't need it i don't i didn't think it was terrible but i agreed that it could have been a lot shorter and when the drama regarding the salt licks is the most interesting part of it that's probably an issue with it Kristen, what did you think of stick around I think that some of the more difficult challenges for the competitors are not necessarily the best viewing, kind of like the, uh, I don't know what the hell these things are called, but the same thing in the next episode where they had to chase the box, like that was really boring, but it was probably really difficult. So like, I get why they do it, but it obviously wasn't good TV, but I, yeah, I'm not really sure why they got the salt licks. They just like put them on a table. The whole thing was just kind of weird. Chase the box. Is that like um, Chase Rice's TV show where he tries to find a woman to join with him? Um, I'm sorry. I need to stop. Pilot season's (laughs) upon us. You're just looking for royalties now. (laughs) It's pilot season. I'm sorry. (laughs) I need to stop. Um, We're going to get cancelled and uh, Ben Powell's Amazing Race pilot (laughs) podcast will take over or something. Um, uh, Jared, what did you think of Stick Around? I thought it was an okay challenge. It's it's the building challenges are usually uh, difficult and challenging, um, but I'm all for kind of more of those. I agree that they probably didn't need to show as much of it as they could, but it was great the scenes with um, 
Haley and like the kids was pretty funny, and then also just like the tribe around. Um, oh, what's her name from the truck stop team? Rochelle. 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 Yeah. So that was good. The kids was pretty funny, and this was also the first time we've really seen Ali kind of start to lose it. Like she, you should have done this, and there was a really funny. I think the clue was who's feeling grassy, and. <laughs> Steve said, oh, you're feeling grassy, and then she was doing it. She's like, what do you mean? I'm feeling grassy. What does that even mean? <laughs> I thought that was a pretty good moment, uh, probably the most entertaining Ali has ever been. But, yeah, this was kind of the beginning of the end for them. But, Rossi, did you, like, stick around? Um, yeah, boring challenge, but definitely difficult. Um, I just was really still thinking, enjoying when Ali and Steve pick up the biggest salt lick they can find <laughs> and everyone else has these little pebbles and so that was so fun. Yeah, so we had a, a few good all right moments from it, but I agree that the challenge was a bit meh. Um, was it season 22, I think, they went to Africa and they had to, like, get a whole entourage of African locals to join with them, they had to get them in their cars and they drove around, they followed them everywhere. I think it was 22, and we had the YouTuber guy with the scorpion and that, like, yeah, why couldn't we have something interesting like that? But that drive to the Rangers headquarters for the blue hand in their salt lick, uh, like Kristen said, don't know what the hell that was for. Uh, why did they have to do that? It's another case of uh, Amazing Race Americans just doing jobs for the locals, I guess. And we had our detour for this first half of the episode. We had track or pack, um... Usual questions, what was more interesting, what one would you do, and general thoughts about it. I don't know if any of them were particularly interesting, was it? were they, Jared? No, I didn't think either of them were kind of that exciting. Um, I definitely would have picked Pack just because from watching it, it looked like it was a lot easier. I did think it was interesting kind of with the whole... Um, how you could only have three teams doing sort of one at a time, um, which I kind of think is good. I hear you like to kind of see both details, but then it was just because Rochelle and Mike were so far behind, it kind of worked in their favour that the other teams were finished um, the pack, so then they could do that as well, and that sort of got them ahead of other teams. That was a bit weird. And the guy at the desk was just so awkward turning them like, <laughs> you can't do this because three teams are doing it, uh, so uh, you must uh, do uh, track. Excuse me? Uh, uh. <laughs> No, you can't do that. Uh, I don't know what the hell that accent was. But. Like, surely they could have just written it on the clue, like, if three teams are doing this, if all the stations are taken, you have to pick the other one. Or or something. It was just weird. I felt sorry for the guy. Um, <laughs> Poor Mr. Saltley. Um, yeah, did did Pack remind you of Australia versus New Zealand? I went to Africa, remember that, to feed the lions and cut the meat? That's yeah, a little was. bit. So the the Australian, that challenge was definitely better in the Australian version. Just, like, they had to cut up more gross stuff, and they had to trek, like, a fair way to sort of feed the lions, so that was good. And that also, involves like, people falling over and being pushed. And... Yeah, and people <laughs> dying along the way in the heat. Um, <laughs> track was funny, though, because just because of the stupid massive antenna thing, like, surely there's a better system to, to <laughs> sort of tra track these animals and just, like, everybody was having it. Playing each other. So was... Track seems so much harder, but I loved Phil's description of the detour. Two exotic uh, African animals, elephants, and wild dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? That was going to be giraffes or something. We're feeding wild dogs. And just all these hungry dogs running around. Well, yeah, it's very exotic. Uh, Colin, detour. Uh, I I was thinking the same thing as Jared with the track. Um, it, it was a pretty cool challenge to watch because you get to see a lot of the animals up close and it would have been fun to do. But why the whole gadget thing? And it, 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 even if it did work, which I doubt, because we didn't even see any clear evidence of these people saying like, oh, our, our thing's beeping. That means the elephant's over. It's like, no, look, there's an elephant. This could have very well just been drive around until you see one. Like, yeah. I think they put that in there. I'm not sure how uh, legit trunk radar is. Like, I'm not sure if that's an actual thing, is it? <laughs> well, they were probably worried when they saw, okay, half of these people are just going to be carving meat and throwing it at dogs. Let's do something to make this. <laughs> let's come up with some weird gadget. And they just pull an antenna off of somebody's roof, attach it to, like, I don't know, like an old Game Boy or something. 
And like, you got to hold this up in the air. You've got to have some action going on. Well, you never know, because I thought the Filipino uh, Michael Jackson uh, traffic warden was BS, and we, that turned out to be real, and Kristen tells us you have to wear suits in Monaco, so you never know, it could be real, but uh, any other thoughts on that, Colin? Uh, I mean, if I had to choose between the two, I would have chosen the track. I mean, there was a lot of gagging going on with the meat carving, and ultimately you're just sort of throwing meat at dogs uh, i did wonder why it took so long for <laughs> not, no. i wonder why it took so long for a team to just throw all the meat out at once they seem to be taking their time which i don't really get the purpose of that like let's throw one piece out let's wait a couple seconds throw another piece out it's like just dump the whole thing out on the ground like they're gonna come to you why did they wait so long kind of teasing the dogs eh? poor yeah. dogs um <laughs> rossi what did you think Rossi, what did um, you? <laughs> no, I. No, you didn't think. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Are you talking to me or the other people in the room with you? No, I mean, what do you think? <laughs> Go on, Rossi. I'm sorry. Um, I liked them. It was just like the dogs. I don't know. They felt the challenges. <laughs> Yes. I don't know. And? I like the challenges. Uh, one obviously was significantly easier than the other, just to throw meat off the truck. <laughs> and I was asked, oh, can we go down and pet them or whatever? <laughs> um, but I don't know. I would have rather have done track just because I wanted to see an elephant, not these wild dogs. Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Is that the thought that goes through your head every time when Rossi's speaking? <laughs> that's what's running through your head the whole time. Is that it? Are you done yet? Are you done yet? <laughs> I tease, Rossi. I tease. Kristen, right, tell I'll, us about I'll the I'll say detail. more. I'll say more, Rossi. Well, you dug yourself One thing now, I Noah. noted... <laughs> One thing I noted was that when the three teams had done pack... And then they had left, and then Mike and Rochelle had gone to do it. Yeah. So their gate was wide open. The other ones were closed. So essentially, the dogs could have like come up <laughs> again <laughs> and attacked. That would have spiced up the episode a bit. We had the Mike and Rochelle medibacks <laughs> from, from the exotic dogs. <laughs> Kristen, tell us about the detour. <laughs> Um, I actually thought there were a few, like, really good moments during this. Like, I, you were talking about, um, Phil's, like, stupid explanation. I don't think he goes, they get to help keep them alive. It's like, pause, 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 and then um, I really enjoyed during the uh, track thing when Haley's just sitting there like, can I help? Can I help? He's not listening to me. Can I help? <laughs> he can I help? Her at all. He completely ignored her. And then he's, he's like, you can just look at it. She's like, but I want to hold it. And I, that was like my favorite moment of the entire episode. Um, yeah. And then <laughs> Mike and Rochelle are like the luckiest team on this season. Like that they got in to do the easier challenge when they seem fun. Like they get every break and it's awesome. Yeah, no, I'm I'm loving the fact that uh, they are still here no matter how they got here. But moving on from that, uh, we had those exciting detours and it was straight to the pit stop in spit copy. Um, who knows if I got that right? And they had to, well, it wasn't, uh, they had the golden peaks that they had to climb, which I thought was pretty fun, uh, having Phil up on that hill and then not knowing how to get up there and then him teasing people about not climbing and all that jazz. And then um, I think there was a scene where he pointed when Laura and Tyler were climbing up so that knew that Matt and Ashley were coming. But Jared, did you like this pit stop? Yeah, I thought it was a good one. I, I do appreciate when 
um, the pit stop's either a bit harder to get to terrain-wise or it's hidden kind of around a location so the teams have got to uh, do a good look for it. Um, yeah, and it was a good close finish, so that was good as well. Crystal? Yeah, not much to say, pretty much what he said. <laughs> Rossi? Um, I like the location, but I do have to disagree with Jared saying that he likes the like hidden pit stops you have to find. Like last season, we had that like back alley carpet shop. <laughs> I did not like that pit stop. <laughs> well, we don't talk about the back alley uh, carpet shop. <laughs> yeah, that was that was, that was still a bit seedy. Watching that back, uh, Colin, the Golden Cliffs of Namibia. Yeah, I loved them having a hard to find pit stop, and I think the difference between this and the carpet one is that. It's, it's different when they're just wandering around and they can't even find the flag, but for them to be able to see Phil and not know how to get to him, that's what made this so entertaining. Um, so we have... Uh, Tyler, we're right there. They're just the wrong way and Laura can't climb. Matt and Ashley won $5,000 each. Uh, Laura and Tyler, date night. Third was Blair and Haley. Fourth, Jenny and Jelani. Fifth was Mike and Rochelle, and six. I was so happy about this. Ali and Steve, the most boring team left on the race, were last, <laughs> and a non-elimination, which was just devastating. And we had the first time that they were really fighting, and uh, and then, yeah. Well, Phil said, "What if I do this is a non-elimination?" So that was the end of that, and um, we'll talk more about them later. But jumping into the second half of the episode, Wait, Noah. Yes, Rossi. Was this the episode where they had the flat tire? Yeah. Uh, yes. It's both episodes. Oh, because we didn't yeah. talk about like the funniest moment that they ever had on the show was yeah. when um, Ali, when Steve was changing the tire, and Ali says, "I just want a lion to come and just bite me now." <laughs> and she's like, "No, I'm just kidding. Please don't let that happen." She was really like when they were over at the side of the road, like. I did the thing, so he has to change the tire and all this. I told you about it. Uh, yeah, but it was that episode, and also Jenny and Jelani had a flat in this next one. But yeah, we. Started... Oh, wait, I have a question too. Hold on. Yes. <laughs> um, do you think that they've actually been quiet through the first like six episodes or whatever, and they just now started to show them like self-destructing because they sucked, or like is this the first time that that happened? I think it's the first time it happened. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, Colin. Yeah, I mean, we haven't seen them be challenged at this point. And I, I, at least from what I can remember, they've always sort of been at the front. And I just think they're one of those teams that they hold it together when they're doing well. I mean, it would make sense. They're both Olympic athletes. I mean, Ali's medaled in the Olympics before. So bronze olympic athlete yeah bronze by default i should add <laughs> too uh, but, but uh, yeah i uh, still counts I, I i wish that they had had more conflict throughout the race because i was really entertained watching them bicker with each other and argue this episode really was the cyclist equivalent from last where they just had one bad mm -hmm. week and it was an uh, entire downfall yep. but um that's an interesting question, though, Kristen, because on one hand, you say that they're just showing that to show their downfall, and they've been like that the whole time. But on the other hand, was it were they last because they were bickering this week? Uh, Jared, any insight into it? Um, I'd agree that it was kind of just a one-off thing, because even in the next episode, there's a, like a little bit of bickering, but like they seem to sort of even though they're in last being, uh, they get along sort of fairly well in the next episode, and, and even though stuff's going wrong, they don't get too sort of caught up about it, so I do think it was just kind of heat of the moment stuff. Jamie, could you leave my bed Rossi, out? anything else? Um, I'm going to go with what Colin said, just like a one-off time, because, I mean, they've had pretty successful track record. They got a speed skating challenge in the season, so they've had it pretty good, so I think this was just like a one-off, twice-off time. I just want to ask this. Does anyone else have anything else to add before we go <laughs> on to part two? Sorry. No? Commercial break over? All right, let's go. Episode two, previously on The Amazing Race. 
we started with sleeping in tents, which I thought was pretty cool. It kind of reminded me of the Shetland Islands, one of my favourite lakes of the Amazing Race. And after that, they had to head to Swaka Pund, something German. And there was a lot of talk about what would happen with the um, with the express pass, and we had a flashback to the Ashley falling moment. We didn't actually see the fall, but we had a flashback to that moment. It made me want to go back and watch that. Um, we'll get to the express pass and the U-turn later, but they had to look for the next destination in the local newspaper. Tristan, anything to talk about here, or was this just a waste of... No, I was just excited to see stuff in German, and I could read. You speak German? Really Hang on. Uh, it's so kind of busy in Deutsch. Ah, see, si, see. Si. Nein. Give us the subtitle. That's Nick Deutsch. Give us the subtitle. Of what? <laughs> of what you just said in <laughs> German. Oh, I just said I, I just said I speak a little bit of German. <laughs> um, yeah, but where does this go? Is German or what? What? Have you been to... Tell us about why you're speaking German. <laughs> Five years of German in middle school and high school. Does... And my family's German. My dad my dad speaks fluent German and I learned it at basketball camp. Yeah. <laughs> Does everybody get German? The German basketball there? camp. Or is that just like a special school? <laughs> German basketball camp. I'm dying! Shoot the hoop! Three pointer! Oh, yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, say one more thing in German before we move on. I don't know what to say. Say your team number one. Team number one. Numero uno. Numero uno. You impressed me more with the first one. Those, those five years of lessons really paid off. Your parents must be proud. <laughs> Like, Udo is German? I thought that was, like, Italian. Pearson's Numerian. That's German for we are number one. Well, it's not we are number one. It's you are number one. Ich bin Numerian. I'm uh, number one. I love Uno. Do you I can't Uno? say you plural. What? <laughs> oh, I love Uno. Uno's awesome. Can we do an Uno podcast? Um, I don't know how we'd do that. Yeah. But... <laughs> we could play a game via Skype, but we'd all have to have our own packs, and wait, no, that wouldn't work. Anyway. <laughs> Flashback to actually following the local newspaper. Oh, yes, that was it. So what did you read in German in the paper then? Oh, I don't know. I wasn't paying that much attention. <laughs> it, oh, a newspaper. It could have been in Chinese for all we know. Kristen wasn't really paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, come on. Uh, I like the idea of them having to search for something in the newspaper. I just wish they weren't told where to go to get the newspaper. Like, if it would have been the second you leave, you have to find a newspaper on your own, and everybody's running around to whatever gas station or grocery store or you know, whatever they can post office they could find. That would have made it a little bit more interesting because it, it was getting ridiculous in the end when they were just walking in and going to the the. There was a lineup of everybody saying, can you read this to me? Okay, whatever they just asked, we need the same thing. And that, that just was too much. <laughs> Rossi, did you like it? Um, yeah, I like the finding aspect of it. Yeah, the translating was a bit off. But I just thought it was so funny when Ashley says, are we going to Germany? <laughs> yeah, well, how come you didn't tell us about your German when we when during the German leg, Kristen? I don't know. You're an ass. <laughs> Should it be a random question at the end of every episode? Jeez, yeah. I, d I need to make up a list of like a thousand questions just to, to find things out. Um, I didn't realize that was the way life works. Let's be honest. Even if he had asked, you would not have participated in those questions. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to play these games. Stop asking these questions. Um, Jared, newspaper, German. Um, I thought it was good. Obviously, a slow news day in Namibia for the Amazing Race <laughs> to get some advertising space. Um, 
But yeah, I agree that it, it could have been more interesting um, if they'd had to find it by themselves. And the guy standing outside reading, reading the paper just looks super sus. And then he was translating like a couple of teams. So that was funny. Yeah, I you love... You should plant that. Well, that's, yeah, I'm amazing. It's not rigged. I also... Um, well, at least he was like standing out there because he saw cameras and was like, hey, I can do something and get on TV. <laughs> He's going to be Namibia's uh, next... I was going to say Namibia's got talent, but I almost said Namibia's <laughs> next top model. Well, <laughs> translating German is a talent I wouldn't rule it out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I would genuinely like to know how much they paid for that advertising for that spot in the Namibian times. Um, but I was disappointed we didn't have a return of, of Hagen, the, the Namibian Bush news, <laughs> news agent. That would have been good. Hagen just starts popping um, up in every episode for whatever role they could find for him. Yeah, and he's going to be Hagen and Sergeant Jericho House in London next. But Can I just uh, bring right. up one <laughs> random moment that was really funny? I don't know if anybody else liked it, but... Matt was talking to his cab driver, and he completely butchered the name. He's like, you know where we're going? Swakum, and he just, like, trails oh. off. <laughs> and the cab driver just looks up and is like, yeah, yeah, that's it, man. <laughs> yeah, no, that was good. And Jared pointed out in the comments, if you were a listener of the Australian Amazing Race Oz season, the return of the Namibian wife would have been great. Uh, that was a season-long... Uh, Talking points, so I can't believe I forgot about the Namibian wife, Jared. Along with the Russian cab oh, driver. Ah, yes, Vladimir, the Russian cab <laughs> Oh, we miss Amazing Race Australia versus New Zealand. Um, hello, blind dates around the world. All right, let's move on to the roadblock. Um, and no, Kristen, it's not called Chase the Box. It was called Airdrop. <laughs> That's a different show. <laughs> That's Teen Mark. That's a teen mum roadblock. <laughs> so, yeah, airdrop. I think Steve kind of said it best. It's literally running on the flat ground and finding a box. So, Kristen, what did you think of best the box? Um, like I said before, it wasn't really exciting viewing, except for when, like, Allie was having a fit. <laughs> but, but, like, other than that, it wasn't that exciting. I did... Uh, enjoy seeing, um, like, I guess it kind of goes with some of the stuff that happened later, but I kind of love seeing the, um, uh, I can't think of words right now, the, uh... <laughs> Just say it in German. Compar- you get it's a big this. problem for a podcast. <laughs> like, the <know>. comparison... <laughs> <laughs> you know? It's a problem like for compar- bilingual people. <sighs> like, the comparison kind of between, it's not the word I was looking for, but the comparison kind of between, like, the teams where you see, like, how much, like, Jelani killed that challenge, and then he can barely, like, move a tire. We're, like, like, old himself trying to do that challenge, and then was, like, fine doing the heavy lifting. So it's kind of, like, I like seeing the variety of, like, <laughs> skill, skill sets or whatever. Open the thesaurus. Yes, contrast, yeah. contest. Thank you. <laughs> We got there. <laughs> I really wish they uh, dressed Mike up in his tweed brown jacket from Monaco and when he had to run uh, during that and had, like, a full sweaty back this time. But Colin chased the box. Yeah, this was a, a bit of a problem. I mean, first of all, Laura, her disappointment when finding out it wasn't actually skydiving completely echoes what every member of the audience was thinking because... <laughs> You're seeing the skydiving. You're like, yeah, it's going to be skydiving. No, you're going to be running across the desert looking for something. And did anybody else notice how hard of a time they had making this interesting that there were these very uh, – I, I did lots of video editing, so maybe I noticed more. But there were these weird transition shots where it would fade in and out. And it's it's like it was the same shot over and over again. It was like they were trying to just show you how tedious and boring it was by the fact they didn't even have anything to edit to in it. The shot with Steve when they zoomed out and they had where his box was was very weird because it was like a map yeah. showing where it was, but then it had real footage of him over the top. It was just very bizarre. There is also I, – I have I can't be the only one who's wondering between these two episodes if Steve may be legally blind in one eye because he can't stay straight <laughs> on the road. He goes the wrong direction when he's looking right at what he's supposed to pick up. Like Steve has some vision problems. I hope he's not the the actual pilot on the bobsled. 
yeah, um, well, maybe we won't see him in the 2016, wherever those Olympics are. Um, Rio? Uh, well, that no? would be summer. Rio. South Korea would be 2018. Uh, yeah, he's a winter bloke, yeah. yeah. Um, he'll be, he'll be Montgomery, um, we're team number one! Um, <laughs> chase the box. Rossi, chase the box. <laughs> go! Ready, oh. set, go! You cut out. Um, and I love a good chase the box challenge. Um, no, it was kind of nothing. I mean, it was a big letdown. I would have rather had them skydive or bungee jump. Not that they really could bungee jump there, but um, uh, I don't know, something different other than running. Like Bungee <laughs> jump? Bungee <laughs> jump out of a moving airplane? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that is a challenge they knew. They could have dug a big hole and did like Return of the Jedi um, sand pit bungee yeah. jumping on like a platform. So that would have been pretty cool. And jump down, and there's like a sand eating creature at the bottom. And if you're really tall, you might get your head chopped off. Um, that's what I want to see. Is that it, Rossi? Yeah, that's it, Noah. <laughs> Jared, chase the box. Go on. Um, I didn't mind it. I thought it was okay just because it sort of gave teams a chance to get ahead of uh, each other. It wasn't kind of if they'd done skydiving, which would have been great just for the sort of character moments, but there wouldn't really have been much chance for the order to have changed. So it was good to have something where um, things could switch around a bit. I also did enjoy that there was just kind of plastic bags and, and rubbish at random intervals to sort of trip teams up. So that was good. But, rub it into the teams that they weren't skydiving with the stupid gnome and that the gnome will be skydiving down to the mountain, strapped to an instructor. Like, the whole segment of, with the Travelocity gnome in this episode was so, so lame and over the top. I love I loved the it. gnome. I'm so glad we had the Travelocity roaming gnome back on the course. Um, I'm probably alone there, am I? Um, <laughs> all right, we'll talk about the gnome. Um, all right, moving on. This time we had to drive to Snake Ben Pan, and we had the speed bump uh, for Ali and Steve, which was flights of fancy. Um, Colin, was this just random? Uh, it, it was easier or harder than eating an ice cream? When when I went to the Bahamas, they had these everywhere. Like whenever you go into souvenir shops, those little what speed bumps? Oh, the, the, Jeez, it doesn't sound like a fun the, holiday. The tin can, uh, like when they take soda cans and they turn it into airplanes or helicopters or cars or trucks and things like that. Um, that's like a, a like a real art there. So I've seen that, and it doesn't look like it's easy. Um, the funny, the funny thing to me though was Ali again. Another one of those Ali reactions where you could tell she was not having fun was when she showed up and she said that the way she said it was so funny. She's like, why are there children here? Like she was disgusted at the sight of children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was good. Uh, <laughs> Kristen, flighting of fancy. Um, it seems kind of like dangerous to be like having kids play with like <laughs> hands. Like, isn't that yeah. sharp? I'm going to say at least like, two kids got cut by those coke wheels. <laughs> Rossi, talk about the the uh, the planes. No, I kind of like the challenge. It was simple, but it was actually like something they had to work through and do. And even though they were getting help from the kids, because I couldn't figure out how to do anything. Um, but it was, I didn't mind it. It was whatever. Jared, what did you think of the challenge? Uh, I thought it was fairly boring. I mean, speed bumps generally are, um, as far as a speed bump goes, I think feel like it was challenging enough, although, like, we've already seen kind of like a, a build-it speed bump this episode with those grasshopper things that they had to build on the other legs. So um, a bit of the same thing, which is a shame. I'm not sure about the speed bumps. I feel like we need to implement something new. I mean, we can't get Namibian locals to be giving people money like the old days, but I feel like we need something new. Speed bumps are getting a bit meh. But after that, we had the U-tour, and we had another fill on the scene. Uh, we'll talk about the U-turn, but let's just talk about the detour in general first. Uh, 
work or play, uh, work, Blair and Haley, Laura Tyler, and then Jenny and Jelani, and then play, Matt and Ashley, uh, Stephen Alley, and then Jen and Jelani with the Express Pass, which I almost forgot they had it until this week, but yeah, uh, so let's say, Kristen, cautiously talk about <laughs> work or play. Um, I wasn't really paying attention, so I don't know what you just said. But, work or play, um, the detour, talk about it. Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> I'm laughing at the comments. Um, I don't even remember, like, what happened. What was... Oh, wait, no, I do. Hold on. Hold on, it's coming I'm back. I'm holding here. on. <laughs> you might have to cut this out. Um, oh, I am... Can you stop? <laughs> I'm done. Are you talking to, like, <laughs> the person in the dungeon, or...? <laughs> <laughs> I hate you so much. Oh my god. Um, am I done here? Uh, talk about work or play. You know, <laughs> someone grabbed some wheels and put it along the sand, or they sand skied the detour of the episode. Oh. So. Um. Yeah, I kind of vaguely remember that. Uh, they were both kind of boring and kind of pointless. I don't think the skiing line would be easier because I would have a lot of difficulty. I thought Matt and Ashley finished before whoever got there right after them, though. Uh, Colin, you ski because you're from Canada. I Talk don't, about the detail. but I will say <laughs> that cross-country skiing is mandatory in the 5th and 6th grade where everybody has to learn it, and I hate skiing it. Skiing French camp? It, it it's well we went to we did it at winter camp but we also just do it at school it's like once a week you'd have to do cross country skiing during the winter and Jeez. it is so hard like i hate it and the second they showed that i'm like i would never do that because it is especially when you have to walk up like it's impossible it, it's miserable i was miserable just watching them do it the only bit, good bit about that, well, I would love going down on the board at the end, but the other bit would be dreadful. Yeah, it's really tough. And and it it's it's impossible to walk up sideways. Like, I was feeling for them because I don't know how they did that. I, doing that on snow is hard. Doing that on sand would be even worse because you're probably sinking right in there. Uh, what did you think of work? Um, It's another one I'd hate to do just because I hate driving tediously um but i did like to see finally you know mike and rochelle get to go completely beast on something and you know destroy yeah that was built for them that channel. it was and it's about time because they've been you know mixing perfumes for too long like they're, they're <laughs> these are like pro wrestlers and roller derby athletes like give them something up their alley finally uh, no, Ali was eliminated. Oh, oh okay. My mistake. <laughs> so, um, that was bad. Uh, Jared, work or play, did you like them? I thought they were both okay just because they were fairly different to each other, so that was good. Um, work, it's hard to say. Work it seemed a lot easier, but I suppose time-wise it's hard to tell what boxes actually quit. Um, it would have been good. I would have liked to see sort of more of the downhill in the skiing. I mean, them going uphill across the country was a bit boring. It would have been better if there was kind of sort of some element to it. But, um, I mean, overall, sort of fairly standard detours. Uh, Rossi? Um, I like them. Um, I think I preferred work over <laughs> play just because I felt that it seemed harder to do play. I don't know why. Um, but I did think it was a lot of, uh, not a lot of, I think it was a smart decision for Jenny and Jelani to use the Express Pass before they went to the challenge and then immediately run to the U-turn instead of doing the challenge and then knowing you're going to have to do another or something like that. Yeah, um, let's talk about the Express Pass and the U-turn then. This was kind of reminded me of the 20s, this one, because I feel like this was... The a time when the U-turn was used very correctly and was kind of strategic. Um, I didn't realize it was a double U-turn. I'm thinking, why would you U-turn Jenny and Jelani and not Ali and Steve, seeing as they've already speed bump? And when I realized it was a double, then it made a lot of sense. But I thought these decisions of U-turning uh, Jenny and Jelani and then Ali and Steve was just the most perfect decisions you could make 
on the U-turn rather than just doing whoever's closest to you or whatever. Colin, did you like the double U-turn this time, especially compared to week one? Yeah, I mean, there was a lot more thought put into it this time. Um, it's one With Jenny and Jelani, it's one of those things that... Uh, it's tough to say if it's really a good move or not, because the most you're really going to do with somebody, I mean, you're flushing out the express pass, so it might be good down the road, but the most you're going to do is just put them on an even playing field again. So you could potentially be just making them angry for the next leg going against you and making an enemy out of them. So it's hard to say if it really does work out, but it is nice to see people can take these twists and actually think about how to use them properly or Think about how to use it interestingly. That's an interesting point with Jenny and Jelani, but then my other argument would be, um, I guess it's the final five. Do you really need friends when it's down to that many people? But I guess they didn't have to U-turn anyone, really, once Ali and Steve were U-turned. That would almost be a definite them being eliminated. But Mm -hmm. sure, you like the double U-turn and the express pass, all that kind of play a bit strategic for the Amazing Race? Yeah, I thought it was good. Um, I don't know if you turning Jenny and Jelani was the best idea. I can kind of understand the reasoning behind it just because, um, I think mainly just because I would be sort of pissed off at Jenny. But, I mean, I think this was the last leg they could use the Express Pass anyway. So, so um, I suppose it didn't really impact that that much. Jenny's annoyed and she wants to sort of get them back. But I don't think that they'll put another U-turn in the race at this point in time. They've already had two, so it'd kind of be weird to see another one. Yeah, I think that's done. Um, I guess maybe Matt and Ashley's other reasoning was they wanted to win the trip at the end and not have Jenny and Joanne sneak. But I can see both um, aspects of it. Kristen? Um, I agree more with Jenny and Jelani's use of the express pass than I did with the double U-turn. I thought that they were really smart in... Um, doing the first challenge, like, they talked about it for a second, um, and I was, like, yelling at my TV for them to do it, and it worked out well because Jelani destroyed the uh, Find My Box challenge. Um, <laughs> but, but um, and then it made sense because, like Jared said, this was the last time they could use the Express Pass, so obviously they used it, and then they, they would have been behind Matt and Ashley and, and uh, Lauren Tyler anyway, so it didn't do much for them to be U-turns. Like, they were already only going to have to do one task or none, but they were so far behind that they still wouldn't have gotten first, most likely. But um, I thought it was stupid. Like, I thought it was really petty on Matt and Ashley's part to feel the need to get retaliation for whatever Jenny did in week four or whatever the hell it was. Like, they weren't playing it to get them eliminated. Like, if you want to get a team eliminated, Matt and Ashley could have U-turned Jenny and Jelani, and then if Allie and Steve weren't so far behind, Tyler and Laura could have U-turned Matt and Ashley, so only Jenny and Jelani had to do an extra task. It wouldn't have gotten them eliminated in this situation, but I kind of, like, lost a little bit of, uh, not respect, but, like, whatever, for Matt and Ashley's gameplay, because I didn't think that, I thought they were playing too much off emotion and strategy. I think Ali and Steve would definitely have been the best decision to go with, but maybe they knew Laura and Tyler were also going to U-turn them as well, so they had a plan. But, but... All, all they did, though, was like piss off Jenny and Jelani, and that can like light a fire under somebody to push harder, and I wouldn't be shocked if... like I'm, like I'm I feel like there's a little bit of foreshadowing in Amazing Race, which it's not like Survivor or anything, but I, like, I would not be shocked to see Jenny and Jelani outlast Matt and Ashley after that last, like, clip we had of Jenny saying, like, she was going to, I don't know what she even said, but think about how she was going to get them back for it. Well, it will make some, some good TV at least. Rossi, tell us something insightful about the U-turn. Um, yeah, I felt that it was more a poor choice on their part to U-turn them than to... Was there anything than to bet on Jenny Delaney the way they handled it? I think they handled it pretty well. Um, I don't know why they didn't just U turn Laura and Tyler. I felt like that might have been a better choice if they were so close to them. They really wanted to win. Is that it? 
<laughs> I think so. <laughs> I'm teasing again. Um, so we had to race to the pit stop, but not really race because we had, there was gonna cut this oasis, and Phil said just for fun they have to bring an animal with them. Uh, no wild dogs there, which I was disappointed. But yeah, just for fun they had to race with a wild animal. I thought this was a pretty fun addition, but kind of random. Uh, for the end, and it was funny watching them just walk up to the pit stop. Matt, did you like this addition to it, Jared? Yeah, I thought it was good. I mean, it was a bit stupid, but I mean, that's kind of when I enjoy the Amazing Race, when they just kind of don't take themselves too serious and put something lame or just funny in there for the sake of it. And I did love sort of that they had a choice of animals and then the zebra was a bit crazy. <laughs> Mike and the zebra, I loved that. I mean, that was great. And the fact that, that um, the zebra got chosen, like, twice was just perfect. <laughs> well, yeah, Phil said just for fun, but the zebra actually resulted in Mike and Michelle coming one spot lower than they normally would have, which is a bit uh, crazy, I thought. But, Kristen, exotic animals? Um, I, I like stuff like this where it doesn't really do that much, but um, it was still interesting, I guess. Like, um really remember anything about the people that came in like first or whatever but um i liked at the end when it was what everybody before ali and steve so it was mike and rochelle and jenny and jelani i loved i don't know if anybody was paying that much attention but they kept cutting between the two teams and jenny is like dancing around giggling about how fun it is to walk the camel as Mike is getting kicked in the <laughs> stomach by the zebra. And I loved that contrast. I loved the contrast between these two teams. Like, I don't even, I'm not sure how close they even were. I don't remember. But I just loved that she was like, she has been such like a hard ass. But she was having so much fun with this damn camel. And Mike, like, almost goes. So, <laughs> so I hate that for it. And I also liked how they all have, like, these really human names. And it was amazing listening from talk to them. I loved it when the the zebra kicked, but it was kind of like, ooh, that's going <laughs> to... Colin, uh, Dave the camel, the zebra, Ellie, the whatever it was, and all those animals. Well, I think that I wouldn't even put it past the producers that at this point in the race, knowing how many completely predictable results they've had, that they threw this in there just hoping there would be some type of shake-up right at the end because it's getting the point where as soon as people finish their detours, you know who's going home. So I like the idea of doing this. Uh, same thing with having Phil up on the mountain that nobody can find the path to. Uh, little things that could change things up at the end. Um, that nut shot that Mike took, like I don't think he's having children after that. <laughs> I think that <laughs> Rochelle should just introduce him to the kid because that's the only kid he's going to ever potentially Yeah, hopefully have. he passes the kid test then that <laughs> yeah. we keep talking about. I feel like uh, Rochelle is really buying for a spot on Teen Mum here with all this talk about the kid. <laughs> and will he be allowed to meet uh, <laughs> truck stop mum or something? Um, Does anybody think that Rochelle would have handled that zebra totally differently <laughs> than Mike did? But yeah, yeah I feel like uh, that is a good uh, kind of conclusion to this season long <laughs> kid storyline that we keep talking about. So. Uh, it would be very harsh if Mike now isn't allowed to meet Rochelle's child after the zebra kicked him. <laughs> Rossi, zebra kicking people? Um, with the whole exotic animals, I was a bit upset they didn't have more exotic. Like, where was the elephant or the giraffe that they were supposed to walk? Well, they pissed up. Yeah, they don't want somebody to die. <laughs> <laughs> I would have rather have had them walk the wild dogs than uh. these feisty animals if they did that though, they'd have to make them walk leashes and like those people who are dog walkers and they've always got these rabid dogs everywhere that would have been pretty good but yeah the drafts they just keep getting shot um haven't you been reading the news rossi um, it was a I'm very sorry, the, the, times. <laughs> the namibian times um, you don't teach right. that at drew university <laughs> <laughs> all right let's let's wrap this baby up in the order of the people who eliminated i'll just do a quick round table i'll keep the same order and we'll just talk briefly about each team there's only six left now and uh, thoughts on the going ahead uh thoughts on this episode and how they'll do in the final four episodes 
Uh, first was Laura and Tyler, and they won a trip to New Zealand. I wonder if they're going to meet Phil out there. Um, hello, season 13. And there was an interesting point made here. Every team left has been first at least once. I thought that was a pretty cool stat, and I'm not sure if that's the only time this has ever happened, but I thought that was pretty cool. But let's just do a quick brief round for each person, Colin, Laura, and Tyler. I think the last couple weeks, Tyler especially, is getting really entertaining. Uh, he seems to be having fun on the race. Laura's just sort of there, but uh, I'm, I'm liking Tyler more every week. Uh, I love their prize was, uh, you know, they get to go skydiving. I mean, the race is <laughs> going to give it away as a prize, but you won't show it. Instead, we see people walking through sand dunes. <laughs> Would have been nice to have that on the race. Um, but uh, they're they're... One of the front-running teams at this point, I'm pretty sure I had them as my first-place pick at the beginning of the season. So if that is true, then uh, I'm happy with their placings now. Uh, I will tell you that in just a moment. Um, Rossi? Um, you know, I like uh, Magdalena and Hayes. <laughs> They're doing well. Uh, uh, I, yeah, Tyler's gotten a lot funnier ever since they were on that boat in Monaco, and he's been kicking back ever since. Bro. I just hope they stay strong for the finale. Oh, you so you want them in the end then? Yeah, I'm liking them that well enough to put them in the finale. Jared? Yeah, they're sort of moving up in the world, I think, um, and moving up in the liking category as well. Um, I mean, it was a couple of good episodes. Uh, Tyler seems to be sort of good at everything that he does, which is helpful to their team. So if Laura can just kind of learn to rock climb and, and get a bit better at some other things, then I think they've got a good shot of, of winning the whole thing. Kristen? I actually don't like them that much now. But, um, I think the good thing about the teams we have left is that um, like they're not quite a level playing field, but I, I'm not sure that any one of these teams is going to be the winner. Like, I can't call that now at all. I think they're all pretty, like, everyone has a shot still, which is cool. Number two was Matt and Ashley. These two teams were the front runners for both episodes. Probably my favorite team left. I'm not loving any of these teams, but I'm not hating any of them. Colin, Matt and Ashley. I was really starting to cool on them the last couple of weeks, um, but then they had that moment, the the gnome puppet show whatever it was they were doing i mean uh, <laughs> that was brilliant if if they if they lose the race they got to start a youtube channel with the uh, gnome puppet show in the future well i'm hoping that's another one for pilot season the the roaming gnome the travelocity <laughs> roaming gnome gets its own tv show i would love that it could be an animated one or claymation or whatever i, I really want a gnome tv show oh. rossi matt nash um I like them, but not enough. So, they're meh. Jared? Um, yeah, of all the teams left, I think I'd probably be least sad to see them go. I did love sort of the moment when they're in first and then the teams behind them stopped and then they just completely freaked out and it was just funny watching <laughs> Matt sort of get out of the car and be, just be like, what, what, what's happening? What's happening? And then the other teams were just kind of sitting there laughing and so that was good. Kristen? Uh, yeah, they're the other team I don't really like that much. Like, I love, I liked all of these teams over most of the teams that are gone, but now that we're down to so few teams, like, I'm not really that interested, and I don't see them going to the, if it's a final three this season, I don't really know if we know that, but I don't see them making the final three. They're just, I don't think that they're strong enough, even though we saw them at the front these last two legs. In third place, we had Haley Blair, Dave, and Travelocity Roaming Gnome. <laughs> I love to introduce them on the mat. That was brilliant. Uh, Colin, Haley Blair, Dave, and Travelocity Roaming Gnome. Well, they're the only team that never disappoints, and um, I, I don't know what it is. It's, just, it's, it's like watching a car wreck, but I, I've been so disappointed the last two weeks with them getting along. I'm really happy. Yeah, I hate the, it when they get along. He, it's annoying because this is what they're they're made for, you know. Uh, this is the pro like the whole blind dating thing. I think could have been a good setup to have teams arguing all the time, and we got with all the teams maybe one moment, but 
the fact that these people don't know each other that well, they're not bold enough to just scream in front of like, you know, millions of people on TV, but Blair and Haley are, and I'm glad it looks like they'll be getting back to that next week. Uh, Rossi? These two are the shining star of all the teams. By far my favorite. Um, well, mostly Haley, but Blair's good. Um, yeah, I just hope that they can get to the end. Jared? Yeah, I love these two. I still hope that sort of somehow they end up together, even though that seems impossible, but I don't know, just somehow work it out and, and be a dysfunctional couple for life. Um, I would, <laughs> wouldn't mind seeing uh, those two, Dave and the Travelocity Roaming Known, if they ever bring back the Amazing Race families. I think that's the only team that I'd like to see. Oh, in yes. Wait, where's Hagen in there? Hagen as well, he could join. Yeah, um, he's probably in a rival team. <laughs> that should be another TV show for pilot season. Blair, Haley, Roaming Gnome, Dave the Camel, and Hagen living in a flat together in Namibia. <laughs> or one of those stick huts. I'd watch that. It's the Namibian um, version of Friends. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Jimmy, make that video. <laughs> uh, Jimmy, if you're listening, I want that now. Kristen, uh, Haley, Blair, Dave, and Roaming Gnome. Um, obviously Haley and Blair are still my favorite. I want them to win. I want them to get married. I love them. Um, they got better from last week. They were real boring last week, but, uh, I like the dramas coming back a little bit. It's just really funny. I don't know if anybody <laughs> has seen Haley's Twitter. Haley comes off as, like, a really sweet girl on Twitter, and it's hilarious, like, compared to what she is on the show. Like, she tweeted this week. Uh, RX for love, third place, start at the bottom, now we're here, love you Blair, with a kissy face, like a heart emoji, like, is this normal? There's something <laughs> wrong with them, and I want them to get married. Well, maybe they are, um, on the road Maybe they are! Yeah, uh, hopefully by the finale they have a sort of reunion, and they tell us who's together and who's not, but I'm guessing they will have not many success stories from that. <laughs> Fourth place, we have Jeleni, or Jenny and Jelani. Jelanini. Um, Jelanini. Um, they were going to be fifth, but then Mike got kicked in the ball, so they became fourth. <laughs> Colin, Jenny, and Jelani. Yeah, yeah. There's... They were so much better in the beginning, and this is one of those teams, kind of like what I was saying, where it should have been a setup for teams arguing, but they're just too polite to do that. I don't see them fighting as much that I as I think that they kind of want to fight. So I'm, I'm hoping for some big blow up, but at least show some personality. I mean, we're not getting anything out of them for about three or four weeks in a row now. Rossi? Rossi? <laughs> Who are we talking about? Jenny and Jelani. Oh, yeah, I don't like them. They're annoying. Go away. <laughs> Jared? Uh, I liked them at the start when they were funny, and then sort of um, as they went a little bit aggro, um, went off them. But I'm sort of starting to sort of come back round to them again, just because I can kind of handle that that um, they're a bit crazy, and um, I like that they're sort of painting Jenny to be to be like this season's villain. So I'm sort of hoping that they can stick around. Kristen. Yeah, I still really like them. I've liked them from the beginning. They were my pick to win, so I'm probably real biased. But um, I love Jenny. She's kind of a bitch, and I love it. Like, she's... I think she makes good TV when she actually gets... Um, like, they, they don't have the same chemistry as Blair and Haley to make, like, amazing TV, but I still think Jenny's good. Um, last and probably least, it's the bro Eve... I was so happy that this was the result of the episode, especially after the non-elimination. Just Please do that, and they're one of my favourite teams. All right, quickly, fifth, Mike and Rochelle, and I'm just going to say I hope they win because they're awesome. Colin? Uh, I just want to go back to, I think it was the first or second podcast where I said that I would love this season if Mike and Rochelle could just be second last every week, and I don't know how they pull it <laughs> off, but somehow they miraculously pull that off almost every week. The downside to that is that in some of these episodes where it is very predictable that 
you know, who's going to go home, they kind of avoid showing the second last team. And I feel like the last couple weeks we haven't seen enough Mike and Rochelle. But uh, I mean, they're they're so entertaining to watch, and everything they do is fun. And Mike almost throwing up when he had to run about ten feet in the desert was like the best moment of the episode. Uh, I really just want them to make the finals. Like this would make up for the the purple scientist last year. <laughs> well, uh, there's four more episodes and one more non-elimination unless there's a final four. So maybe they'll be lucky that when the teams finally catch up to them and they're finally last instead of second last. They may get the non-elimination, so let's hold out. Hope for that. Rossi, Mike, and Michelle? Yeah, I've, they've been, I didn't really like that. Thing, but then I've, they've kind of grown on me and I've been liking them a lot more. Um, yeah, hopefully they're joining Claire and Haley and Thor and Tyler in the final. Jared? Yeah, they're a fun team to watch. I just love, especially that um, Mike is kind of a bit, little bit pathetic at stuff, and then <laughs> Rochelle's just really good at everything she does. Like even just the the moment in the car where Mike has put the wrong key in the ignition and can't start the car, <laughs> then Rochelle's like, "You want me to try it?" And she's like, "You had the wrong key." Like it's just great TV. I have a question yeah, about that. that. Um, has anybody actually seen Rochelle drive this entire season? <laughs> Mike's yeah, Mike's so bad at it, but why is he always the one driving? She'll get in the front seat to start the car, but I don't know if I can remember her driving <laughs> at all this season. He, he was the one who took the one um, the one stick shift lesson. But you, I would, you'd think him working in a truck stop that he would maybe be better at um, turning a key in a car. But. I know. <laughs> that, that was I was watching this with my wife, Jamie, and the first thing she said when she saw him struggling with this is, he's not going to be able to show his face in his own truck stop again. Like, this man should be ashamed for himself. Well, he doesn't work in the Drew University of truck stops. He works in the... <laughs> oh, the, my gosh. The, he, he works in the Utahs um, <laughs> of, of truck stops. The less esteemed. Um, I don't actually know that he could be a very successful truck stopper, but um, maybe we'll find that out. Kristen, Mark and Michelle? Yeah, I love them. They're one of my favorite teams. They're such a hot mess every episode. Like, even the episode that they came in first, they still failed miserably at something. They were just so far ahead that they could still get to the pit stop first. So they just are so bad at everything, but still managed to stay in and they haven't even been saved by a non-elimination. So they've been better than most of the other, like we've had, like, I feel like most seasons have a kind of like really failure of a team that sticks around. Like even the candy girls last season kind of sucks and everything, but stuck around. And they, these are like, it's like a much more entertaining version kind of team. So I'm all for it. I'm sick. Staying to the final. This is the one Mike I want to see win a reality TV show this season of TV, but um, <laughs> that's a different story. Um, I kind of jumped the gun because uh, I was happy to see this team gone, but Ali and Steve were last, and I don't say that because I absolutely hated them. It's just they were always winning, and I didn't want this to be a predictable season, and they were kind of boring, so I was jumping up and down to see that Ali and Steve left a la the cycling girls last season, but they were more entertaining Colin, Ali, and Steve, the bronze gods are gone. Uh, um, I, I was happy that they finally had some moments of entertainment in, the, in these last two episodes. Um, I would have liked them to have self-destructed a little bit earlier. Not that I wanted them to go home earlier, because I think the one thing that they have helped with is they've made this a more competitive race. But it's like you said, I mean, there's they just didn't provide a lot of entertainment and it. They didn't seem to really care that much either. I mean, they were so much about the competition, but it was really funny at the end when Ali said, you know, we've had so much fun. And I'm looking at her, I'm like, really? That was you guys having fun? Like, <laughs> they just didn't show any life this whole season. It would be nice since it's a TV show if we could have seen that, but it's admirable how well they were able to do. And in a way, kind of disappointing that, you know, one mistake with a flat tire is basically the reason that a really good team's not going to get anywhere near the finals. Well, that is the amazing race for you. Uh, anything can happen, Rossi. Um, it's kind of sad that the leg that they're actually entertaining with the leg that legs that they were going home. I wish we had seen them like this the whole race, but 
Yeah, mm-hmm. unless I just didn't go. I didn't really care for them. Jared? Uh, I didn't particularly like them. I think overall they were just kind of a little too focused and that sort of sucked sort of the fun out of, um, although at least the fun moments that I suppose they, they could have shown. Um, but I think it's, it's good that they've gone because I think they were probably the favourites to win, so it's kind of sort of blown everything a little bit more open and made it a bit more unpredictable. And Kristen? I think they were the favorites to win, but I don't think that they would like were guaranteed to beat all these teams. I think a lot of them, depending on the challenges, they could have lost. So I don't think it was that big of a deal that they go out now, but I'm very happy to see them go now because they were really boring. So that's it. I think we're left with five pretty all-rounded, entertaining teams, so that's a good thing. Uh, let's read some, or some trivia from Ali and Steve. Uh, Ali Dudek and Steve Langton. Um, Ali is 24 and Steve's 31. I didn't realise there was such an age gap between those two. Um, not really anything interesting there. Their occupations are athletes and global spokeswoman. Uh, that's Ali, not Steve. Um, trivia. They are the... F- Oh, yeah, I liked this one. They are the fourth team to share a similar team name with another team. That was Steve and Ali from Season 16. But there are more teams. Here's some trivia for anyone. <laughs> so they know other teams that had similar names. I can tell you that one is a team from Season 2 and 4 who had the same name. No. (laughs) Cindy and Russell from Season 2 and Season 4 shared the same name. And there is a second one um, from Season 4 and Season 14. Charlotte and Myrna? (laughs) No, (laughs) not Charlotte and Myrna. Amanda and Chris from Season 4 and also Amanda and Chris in Season 14. I loved how Phil would always pronounce it Amandur, too. (laughs) Amandur. Amandur and Chris. Oh, let's not forget Pamela and Vanessa from Asia Season 2 and Pamela and Vanessa from Philippines Season 1. How did I forget those two ones? <laughs> Vanessa and Pamela from Philippines Season 1 were the ones in the pit stop that we talked about last season, but who knows? So that's another team that shares the same name. So that was a bit of interesting trivia, and obviously our knowledge of the past season isn't up to scratch with Survivor, but... Um, we're getting there. And the other stat is uh, Ali and Steve are both Olympic bronze medalists. Ali for short track speed skating and Steve bobsleigh at Sochi 2014 Winter Olympics. That's all the stats on them. I need a better hashtag, and there must be a better one than hashtag Sochi love. Um, Colin. Um, hashtag Ali global spokeswoman. <laughs> uh, <laughs> They're so interesting. We got so many options here. <laughs> Creative. <laughs> Rossi. Hashtag personality. <laughs> was that a was that a pun? Personality or no? Take it how you want it. Um Jared. Um hashtag don't let him steal. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Best Hashtag, week for hashtags. Hashtag Steve is legally blind. Yeah. Kristen, take us home here. I don't like this game. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> probably the best hashtag of this week. <laughs> um, so let's see. Let's get into predictions. And a lot of people have had a bad week for predictions this week. Um, So I'm going to say that Rossi said that Ali and Steve would be second. I'm going to say that Kristen said Ali and Steve would be second. And I will also point out that you two thought Bergen and Kurt would be third, but that's another story. Um, Not Ali and Steve first. Colin said Ali and Steve would be second. Alex Morella said Ali and Steve would be first. <laughs> Jared said Ali and Steve would be fourth. Jared, what? two weeks in a row. Look out. And the only one to get the point this week. Not even a shared point. Jared, what is going on? I don't like it. 
No, neither. This is a bit of sort of uncharted territory, but um, luckily um, I've got some great picks coming up that aren't possible, so um, hopefully I'll <laughs> get back to last place soon enough. Yeah. Well, well, Jared, you could be like, right on some of them. To read your final five out, you've got Jenny and Jalan, Tyler and Laura, so that could happen. Third, Lyder and Jeff. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Fourth, Ali and Steve, maybe not. Fifth, Jackie and Jeff, maybe not. But you could get one and two, so you're not out of it completely. So there we go. Jarek gets the point. He joins on two points, and I, I haven't been keeping a tally. I'll have the tally by the finale, but I'm pretty sure we're all on the board with at least one point. And Kristen's, Kristen's maybe got two. There was a bit of confusion last week as to whether or not she had a point, but... No, Someone. I got my first point last week. I got my point. Alex even said so. Uh, yeah, all right. You got the re- point. I was reading his thing when you were... Uh... You've got hey, the point. Hey, go check out the website. Now that Alex is recapped. Yeah. Uh, good plug there, Christian. We should be paying you. No, we shouldn't. Um, all right. So... <laughs> 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 ah, harsh but fair. Um, you got to put the work in if you want the dollars, uh, Kristen. So, we want Hi. comments. Yes. Uh, we put the challenge out last week, but the episode hasn't been uploaded. Uh, if you're listening to this one, well, it has been uploaded. The episode hasn't been posted on the website. If you're listening to it, um, I don't know what's going to happen with it. It will be up. You can listen to it. It's just me, Rossi, and Kristen. Oh, it is up. Just in time I was for reading recording. it, yeah. Oh, well, there Last you go, breaking news, it's up. Um, yep. Yeah, so it's up, you can read it now. Um, maybe we've got a few, probably not. But we want com- comments, so when this one goes up, hopefully it will be earlier. Um, we're pushing for at least a day before the new episode airs. Um, this season has been a bit off... Um, Ben's got a new job, I'm lazy, and all this other crap. Uh, Colin didn't record himself, um, <laughs> all this stuff. It's, yeah, it's, got some points. It's very yeah, confusing. Points. Yeah, well, it's your fault, upside Jared. Down. Every, yeah, ever since you got points, everything's gone wrong. No matter, <laughs> it hasn't been uploaded until now. So, um, yeah, we want comments, so we're going to put out a challenge. Uh, we had a few ideas. Um, I think, Colin, do you want to maybe put the challenge... Well, the challenge is... Rossi is hanging out, but he doesn't want to change um... What? Rossi wants no part yeah. of this. <laughs> I yeah, think the right. challenge... Rossi's had a bad experience with his mum, obviously. <laughs> um, sorry, Rossi, if you actually have, that was cruel. <laughs> I Go think Colin. the challenge that's on the table from what uh, we briefly discussed pre-show is if uh, we get... What is it, the number 15? 16. 16. If we can get 16... So that, that is Four. the lucky number for teen mum. Six, 16 comments 16, 16 comments um, on this week's post then we will do uh, an audio commentary on next week's episode of <laughs> Teen Mom <laughs> I will preface by saying no one here has seen except for Kristen and no one gives a fuck except for Kristen <laughs> um, yeah this will be the bring sexy back return um, then I'll, Ben will be on the line but um, no one wants to do it, but it will be very humorous. Um, Kristen, do you want to give us a tease of what's happening? Someone's coming back, or someone's got a sword or something? <laughs> well, on this week's episode, Farah Abraham returns to the show. Everyone else is going to threaten to quit because they oh, all hate her. But she makes molds of her body parts and sells them as sex toys. So, go Farah! Do you want to give her a plug for Farah's website? I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were the um, go-to person for Teen Mom information. Like FarahAbraham.com. <laughs> but... Yeah, so uh, there we go. Uh, Farah's back. Um, Redemption Island, Teen Mom. <laughs> so that's going to be a good one. Yeah, Farah's been voted back into Teen Mom. She's uh, threatening, making people quit. Who the hell voted for me? Um... Yeah, so what what season are we on, Kristen? I don't know. 
Uh, don't pretend that you don't know everything about Teen Mom. I think it's season. I think it's season five with the original girls, the OGs. This is OG is teen... teen Mom. You hear that, people? Teen Mom three. That was cancelled. Oh no, yeah. Teen Mom three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there we go. Um, that's only if we get sixteen comments. Sixteen for the age that they gave birth to their their mums. Oh, wait. Oh my god. <laughs> so yes, yeah, <laughs> comments. We want to, and not just random comments. We want to hear uh, about the show if you're liking it, hating it. Not Team Mum, <laughs> the Amazing Race Oz, and about your general thoughts on this blind dating season. And then we'll do, I'm guessing, a commentary if we can, if, if it's uploaded anywhere first. Guys, <laughs> it may have to be a pre-recorded one, so we can make it ten minutes and not forty minutes. But we'll see. So it has to be 16 comments on this one. And if we don't get it, we're definitely not doing it. And we'll make up a new challenge for the next episode. But we want to hear from you. Uh, hashtag bring back Farah. So <laughs> that's next week, perhaps. Um, that's it for this week. A double episode. A uh, long one to get through, but we made it. Uh, Kristen, Teen Mum fan, 64. Thanks for being here. What? <laughs> That's your user for Team Mum forums. forums. No, it's Chase My Box. <laughs> uh, maybe I can do that later. So thanks for being here. Wow. <laughs> Hello, Ivan, if you're an amazing race fan. <laughs> I'm talking about Ivan. Um, well, I don't know any other Ivans, so I'm talking about Ivan on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of any other Ivans to bring up. Is there a famous Ivan out there? <laughs> Kristen, thanks for being here. Yep. <laughs> Rossi, thanks for being here. You're back on there. Oh, uh, yeah. Thanks, Noah. Is that it? Is that it, Noah? Uh, that's, that's it, Rossi. Um, you've done your job. Here. Colin. Thanks for being here once again, and if you are actually here, or if you didn't record again, and I'm talking to no one. That's right. And if anybody can hear me, all you kids and teen moms out there, stay safe. Don't play with aluminum cans. <laughs> <laughs> and last, but certainly not least, because he's pretty even on the uh, predictions now, is Jared Luby. Thank you. It's been um, an interesting ride. Uh, Kristen, can you say we'll speak to you next time on the planes in German? Uh, no. <laughs> you couldn't play along for one game, could you? Yeah, uh, that's, a, that's a short way of saying that. Germans keep it short. No. Um, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll go, do the closer and then you have to say it, all right, Kristen? You've got a time to prepare. So, yes, leave uh -huh. a comment, subscribe, um, Survivor Oz on iTunes, comment on the website. Uh, Twitter, Survivor Oz, at Ozla underscore Noah, uh, at Colin the Terminator, or whatever his one is, and at Emu Plant King, and at. <sighs> that's Rossi's uh, Twitter account. So that's it. Tune in next week. We've only got four episodes left of The Amazing Race Oz and The Amazing Race before we see that it was cancelled and won't be back for season 27. And in the meantime, I will. We will see being. Next and Mal in the Zivin 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 Zivin